Bonjour, and welcome to Story Lab. This week, we're talking about joy. While we take a look at the story of a celebration where they had some pretty miraculous beverages. Who's gonna help me slice the cheese? Hey, Skylar, I got your text, but why was it all emojis? Hey there, welcome to the party. Um, Barbara. Up, up, up. Intros first. Hey, everyone, welcome to Story Lab. I'm Barbara. And I'm Sebastian. This week, we're talking about joy, which is choosing to celebrate what God is doing. And speaking of celebrating, on to the feast. In order of our celebration, I have prepared the ultimate dish. Ta-da! I call it macaroni and cheese a la mode, covered with chocolate avocado and ginger snap crumbles. Mwah! Okay, I give up. What is all this? Why the emojis? Why the avocado? And why are you Barbara? <laughs> Silly Sebastian. Today is our July Day extravaganza. July Day? Yep, I made it up. You don't say. You know those random holidays like Talk Like a Pirate Day that sound fun but almost no one actually celebrates? Arr. Well, I decided to take all of the holidays in July and mash them into one big celebration called July Day. We have National Mac and Cheese Day, National Emoji Day, Barbara Day, all together in one big extravaganza. That? Actually sounds kind of cool. And this is surprisingly tasty. Right? In a weird, I would never do this myself kind of way. <laughs> There's always a reason to celebrate. And in honor of July Day, I've planned a special experiment. Let's make it. For today's experiment, we're going to make that classic soft drink, root beer. Oh, so National Root Beer Day is also in July. No, that's in August. Keep up. But, uh, sure. To start, you'll need two liters of distilled water, one cup of sugar, one bottle of root beer extract. Root beer extract was traditionally made from sassafras bark, but currently contains wintergreen, licorice, and vanilla. Thank you, random announcer voice. You will also need red and green food coloring, kitchen tongs, a large bowl, a stirring spoon, and our secret ingredient, one pound of dry ice. Warning, always have adult supervision when dealing with dry ice. What he said. Where do we start? Step one, you'll need to add all of your ingredients to the bowl. Start with the water first. Step two, pour in the whole bottle of root beer extract. Step three, add one cup of sugar and stir until the sugar fully dissolves into the water. Four, in order to get that signature root beer brown, mix in the red and green food coloring, using about twice as much red as green. Now that's starting to look like some root beer. But it's kind of flat. Where are all the bubbles? That's where we bring in the dry ice. Step five. I gotta ask, how can ice be dry? Dry ice isn't frozen water. It's actually frozen carbon dioxide. Oh yeah, carbon dioxide is what we breathe out when we exhale, right? <sighs> Correct. And carbon dioxide also makes all the bubbles you find in soda. Let's do this. Wait! Do not touch dry ice with your bare hand or without a grown-up, because it's 109 degrees below zero. Yikes, that's arctic. Ready? <laughs> Whoa! 
You know, it looks like a scene from a scary movie. <laughs> When dry ice is added to a liquid, it immediately changes to a gas through a process called sublimation. The gas fizzes, creating carbonation. Check out all the bubbles. Aw, oh, cool. Could take a while for that dry ice to sublimate. While we wait, it's time for... The Story Before the Story. Today, we're in the book of John, which tells the story of Jesus. Jesus came to earth as a baby. He's the son of God, but we don't know much about his early years. We do know that just like us, he had a lot to learn. As he grew up, Jesus became wiser, stronger, and more pleasing to God and to people. When Jesus was about 30 years old, he went down to the Jordan River to be baptized by his cousin John. God spoke from heaven and said, this is my son and I love him. Afterward, Jesus began to teach and gather followers which is where our story starts. Take it away. Hey everyone, I'm Jen. Hope you're ready to celebrate because we're headed to an awesome wedding in the village of Cana. So far, no one knew about Jesus, but this began to change at a wedding that Jesus attended in Cana, along with his mom, Mary, and his new followers. Everyone was enjoying the excellent feast and the wine that went with it. At that time, water often wasn't clean or safe to drink, so most people drank wine. A wedding celebration would last for days, and the hosts were expected to provide all the food and drink for their guests. The wedding feast was in full swing until Mary noticed a big problem. All the wine was gone! This was a huge fail. Running out of wine meant that the bride and groom would be humiliated. Mary knew that her son was special. She turned to him and pointed out, Do you see? They have no more wine. No wine? Well, that's a disaster. Total party foul. Jesus told his mother, Why are you telling me about this? The time for me to show who I really am isn't here yet. But Mary wouldn't take no for an answer. She marched up to the servants and said, Do what he tells you. Uh, okay. Six giant stone jars stood nearby. These were used for ceremonial washing and could each hold more than 20 gallons of water. Fill the jars with water. You got it, boss. Why are we doing this again? His mom said we have to. Makes sense. You never want to disobey somebody's mama. After the jars were filled, Jesus told the servants. Now dip some out. Take it to the person in charge of the dinner. One cup of water coming up. Hey. This looks different. The servants took the cup to the guy in charge of the feast. You can imagine they were pretty nervous about how this was gonna go down. He's drinking the water. I don't think that's water anymore. Sure enough, the guy in charge immediately pulled the groom to one side. <laughs> My friend, what is this? Everyone brings out the best wine first, but you have saved the best until now. <laughs> I did? I mean, I did. I think. The bride and groom were saved from major embarrassment and everyone could continue their celebration. Jesus chose to turn water into wine as his very first miracle. He did something incredible, simply so a group of family and friends could continue to celebrate and enjoy each other's company. The end! Those servants, can you imagine their faces? Total shock, cleaning water one moment, expensive wine the next. God loves a celebration for sure. So, what's, what's our, our part, part in the story? story? Well, Jesus showed how important it is to find joy in spending time and celebrating with family and friends. So go to all the birthday parties. It's true that parties are great, but that's not the only way we can celebrate. Usually it's just looking to share some joy in the ordinary everyday things. Like if you just finished reading a great book, you can share it with your friends so you can both enjoy it. Or you can celebrate that it's Friday and give some cookies to your neighbors. When my mom and I finish weeding the garden, we celebrate by making super awesome frosty lemonade. Celebrating the little things can bring so much joy to your day. Oh, my new puppy just learned how not to pee on the carpet. Can we celebrate that? Absolutely. I bet your mom is celebrating already. I think I saw tears of joy. Thanks for bringing me joy today. See you next time. Bye. So here's the thing. Jesus, 
showed us how to have joy. And Jesus valued celebration because it brings people joy. Now can we celebrate our root beer? You know it. Cheers. Cheers. Ooh, that's good. We have officially turned water into root beer. Through the miraculous science of dry ice. Thanks for joining us in the Story Lab. See, See you, you next, next time. time. Mm -hmm. We gotta make more of this.